Welcome everybody. My name is Old School Nerd and today we have two videos featuring Sixth Sense, the band from Canada that may not be in Canada very long. An independent band. How long will they stay independent? I have no idea. What are their future plans? Music, ideas, favorite foods, favorite music. These are all questions that I have and so much more. In fact, I found out stuff about this band I had no idea about. My sit down chat with Vicky and Rob coming up right now. Hey everybody, it's Old School Nerd. Um, I don't know how I got this lucky. I mean, I've talked to some pretty important people in my life, but uh, these are some people that have never met me and already they're scared. You can see it in their eyes. See? Well, okay. <laughs> see no evil, hear no evil. Well, we can't speak for Rob, but he's gonna do it anyway. Okay, so for those who don't know, that, that, that over there, that's Killer V. And next to her is her love squeeze. Her main man. What, how, how are you described to your friends, your compatriots in Sixth Sense, Rob? Because to me, you seem like the biggest troublemaker, but I don't think you are. No, no, no I'm, I'm really, I'm honestly like pretty on top of things like at the, the, the two shows we did in Montreal, like I was like the tour manager. I'm like the guy like on, uh, uh, on the ground that gets shit done, <laughs> makes things wow, happen. Wow, what a with, lie. With Vicky, with Vicky, of course, but. I... He's not a troublemaker, but he's a lot. <laughs> he's a lot. Once he starts, he doesn't stop. My favorite part about that answer that Vicky just gave is everyone already knew. Yeah. Everyone already knew Rob's a lot. Yeah, And my favorite part is you could tell that you guys are completely and totally amazing in life together. And I say together because as soon as Rob opened his mouth and started to speak to power, you could just see the, oh God, here it comes coming from Vicky. <laughs> it was awesome. And I, I can identify that, Rob, because I get that a lot too. Yeah, Because Chelsea is like on me all the time. Yeah. But without her, I would literally be lost. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming that's the same for you. Okay. Six cents. I first noticed six cents when one of someone had told me, Hey, you got to check out this other band that Vicky's in and they got this song and you got to check it out and it's Kings today. And I was like, Oh really? And so I checked it out and you guys have seen the reaction, yeah. fell in love with the band. Now I, 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 the question that everybody wants to ask, I'll let you guys go over it. Cause I know you've probably talked about this. Hmm. Four or five dozen times since the first time somebody asked you, how did Six Sense come about and explain the whole Canadian vibe where you guys are from? Because I know that where you guys are from up there, there's a particular musical culture up there. It's kind of weird up there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very European-esque in, in the sense that um, a bunch of metal fans in uh, Montreal and Quebec, that's the province, like the state um, where Six Sense is from, uh, is very open-minded like there's fans of everything like people love power metal symphonic metal death metal black metal uh, rap metal new metal it's like any style of music they're all about it uh, now going back to your question of how six Sense started it actually started with our guitarist brand and our drummer cody they were in this previous band called keychain and um they parted ways with their singer in that band and they were looking to audition somebody else to replace him in keychain um, so when the auditions were happening, one of my old buddies in Montreal, Dave, he's like, Rob, you should, you should audition for, um, keychain and, and join that band. So I hit, I hit up Bran and he sent me three demos that ended up becoming three of the songs we'd release on these two six NCPs. Um, and we, we just started working. He really liked the vibe I had going on. He liked my lyrics. Uh, he liked what, what I did well. Um, and in my demos, I was just rapping and screaming, but he really wanted to have a singer to have these big, these big melodic hooks. Um, so he introduced the idea of getting a second vocalist in the band and he had somebody else in mind. I guess it was somebody else who was auditioning, but I was like, listen, if, if I'm going to be a part of this and there's going to be another vocalist, I just want to make sure that my storytelling and the lyrics are something that I'm in charge of and like I have the final say of or like I curate the entire song and then somebody else would sing my parts or if they are going to collaborate like it has to go through me um so I'm like that could be difficult to find with somebody somebody else being in the band but I was like but hold on I think I have the perfect the perfect vo vocalist that I respect and that I could work with and do this with and it happened to be Vicky 
So uh, she was right there and I was like, wow, this is, this is awesome. And uh, she was working on the demos with me and something special started happening. And then um, once like she was like fully in, like she's like, all right, I'm going to be a part of this. Uh, Cause we wasn't sure we weren't sure because she was still in the agonist at the time. Yeah. And um, that, that was priority. So it's very difficult to get a band off the ground when you're, you have a member that's like the central or one of the central figures in another band that's already established. Um, but in any case, um, once Vicky joined, we started working together and collaborating and then something magical ended up happening during that process. And it was like, wow, this is something special here. Definitely, definitely special. Um, I'm old. I don't know if you guys knew this. I'm an old guy. Like I have kids Vicky's age. So <laughs> she's like, yes, yes, yes. That doesn't I doesn't really add up. But... No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But shut up. We're going to go with it. <laughs> We're going to keep, we're going to keep it going. No. Okay. But okay. Seriously. I, I remember new metal. Like when new metal first started, we came out of grunge and bands were like, okay, we're going to do something that nobody's ever seen before. We're going to incorporate this genre of art with this genre of art. We're going to interweave them and make something completely different. And it kind of took the world by storm. The problem is when you have something that's called new metal, where do you go from there? Is it newer metal? Is it, you know, and I, when people automatically jump and say, and I get this a lot in my comments and I, I tell myself never, never, never jump to the trolls. Don't do it. You guys know you, you can't do it. You, you can't, you gotta just let it go. Just ignore it. When somebody goes, oh, they're new metal. It's really hard for me to say that you guys are mm -hmm. because I grew up in new metal. I mean, I remember, you know, I, I, I lost a flip-flop at Lollapalooza. Never saw that flip-flop again. I know new metal. What you guys are doing is, to me, is, is, an, is, a, is an evolution to new metal similar to what new metal was to just standard traditional back in the day because new metal really never had, other than maybe Linkin Park, had such a reliance on melodic storytelling because you always had that rough rap feel to it it had that urban feel with the metal but i get where when you said rob that i'm going to do my lyrics but i want someone that can really carry that storytelling when you say the word storytelling i'm in and you guys seem that even if you close your eyes and listen to some of the songs of sixth sense you can almost see your video mm -hmm. without even looking that to me is true musical storytelling the musicianship of each member of the band, we always love to say, oh, well, this band is only good because of this person or this person or this person makes the band. In Sixth Sense, there's not really anyone holding back. It's like everybody is throwing in massively. When I did Kings Today, I was like, it sounds like a bunch of prog metal musicians who could play anything and do it for 20 minutes, got together and made a slick, smart storytelling song. Yeah. Yep. So how do you guys go about making these six cent songs? Because obviously everyone is so talented. How do you even approach this stuff? Because we know you're criminally underrated right now, even now, even with the, the kind of pops we've been seeing that's very exciting for all of us. Yeah. <laughs> how do you approach this stuff? Because now people want more and you're like, oh, our songs are pretty elaborate. So how hard is it to put those things together? Um, I don't think it's hard at all, to mm -hmm. be honest with you. Uh, most of the songs we've written, even some newer songs that we are working on right now, um, it's kind of just like what we're feeling in the moment. And uh, I'm not saying that we necessarily go with the first idea that comes to mind, because maybe the first idea isn't the greatest idea, but sometimes it is. Um, we just, I guess, follow our, our instinct and our years of experience. And that's, I think, what makes us uh, capable of writing really great songs is that we are all very experienced. And that's not something you can buy. You can't just skip those steps and become experienced overnight. Um, you know, you could buy equipment, you could buy a bunch of things, publicity, you can't buy experience. So I think that's what's working really well in our favor because we're revisiting a sound that we all grew up on, um, but we all come from different, I guess, um, paths and like Backgrounds. we've all, yeah. 
yeah and we've all been in bands or other musical projects that are completely different and some a lot more technical and demanding so it feels good to just kind of strip it down and, and write for six Sense and be like yeah i know i could probably probably do way more than this on on a technical scale but i don't have to because that's not what makes a good song at the end of the day people want to connect with the song and when you're just like showing everything you can do on one song, people can't connect with that. So yeah, we, um, we all come together and we're just like, we all look at it like, how can we make this the best song possible? What can we as individuals bring to the mm -hmm. table that makes the most sense for the song? So like in Sixth Sense, uh, our guitarist, Brand, he's uh, the primary songwriter. He comes in, presents us the instrumentals. Um, usually with, at least with the Kings Today, Fools Tomorrow EPs, I came in. And I was like, I have a story here, and this is what I want to write about. I'd write the lyrics, write my parts. Um, for some songs, like a song like Fool's Tomorrow, I came up with, or like Forgotten Days, I came up with the singing parts that Vicky did, but then she comes in, does her thing, and makes it better. Like I came up with like this very mediocre off-key melody, and then Vicky comes in, adds her magic, adds all her vocal layers to it. Um, and then after that, um, Sam came in, added all his bass parts at the end, and the, the very final touch was Vicky and her keys and sample sampling stuff. And then that's how we, we made our EPs. Yeah. It, it must be difficult. And I, I don't doubt that you guys, as long as y'all been in the game musically, and then as, you know, together as a unit, personally as a unit, to have three different vocal styles. Because Rob, we know where you're coming from, okay? It's very amazing. And of course, so many people know what, what, what the Queen V can do, um, both from a harsh vocal and a beautiful, sultry, melodic tone, but she can also pop off any time that she feels like it. I find that when you guys create a song, nothing ever really dominates. Everything complements. If it doesn't complement, we get rid of it. Yeah. Because we talk, I, I mentioned it in my reaction, and you, one of you, somebody in Sixth has commented like, oh my God, you get it. Because when I was like, this is like high school musical mixed with Grease, mixed with every Freddie Prince Jr. movie ever made, but it's, it's a song about it and it was perfect. I just waited for the cheerleaders to come out and, you know, go for it, you know, and, and I liken it and I, I haven't told anyone this, but to me, as good as the music is, you guys are really doing great telling proper storytelling in the videos because the videos are relating in a way that gives substance to some things that you're not just okay you guys aren't just standing in a dark room with a bunch of led bars right you know with some yeah right you know you know what i'm talking about like yeah you could do that the music will stand on its own we know yeah but how important is it for you guys to really tell that six six cent story especially you know with the bear Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah. the is it, are y'all really a dysfunctional family? Because everyone thinks you guys are the Griswolds on tour. So so the visuals are super important um, for that reason. Because I think when someone's watching a music video for the first time, um, it's it's not they're not just hearing the song; they're watching something. And if you can create a visual representation of the lyrics, I think it's an easier way. To, to reel them in and to get them to say, to think, to know what the song is about without actually reading the lyrics. And then they'll go back and they'll read the lyrics and they'll be like, oh, I see it connects, you know? Uh, and admittedly, it, it's been easier for some songs than others. Like there's certain songs that we're just like, well, the lyrics are about this. If we were to do a music video, we'd need extras, we'd need this, we'd need that, we'd need a whole budget, like, so we just don't do it. Um, we try and find the easiest way to, to get the message across. Um, and yeah, it's, it's super important. Like, I don't want to change that. Maybe, maybe eventually we'll do a music video that's like just straight up performance. If it's like a song that's like super hype and just like high energy and like, sure. But we're not going to become one of those bands that just like resorts to just looking cool and playing awesome. Like we want to tell that story. And um, as far as our relationship... I think it's just honest, like all those intros that you see in the videos, they're, they're completely like improvised off the cuff. We don't go in with the script. 
And um, I think it's just that our relationship is very honest uh, between all the band members. There's no, there's no ego. There is no um, worry that I might say something that's going to offend someone. Um, and it's actually very refreshing. Like I'm in a band with a bunch of dudes that like can throw something at me, kind of like making fun at me or of me. And they know I'm not going to get upset, which is which is great, because I think that just shows the level of comfort that we all have with each other. Um, and yeah, that's why I think it, it really works for the videos. Yeah, I just want to add, like, we're just we're actually really cool all together. And it's like those like skits that happen in like the intro or outro of our videos. Those are actually like kind of like our, us poking fun at other bands that that's what they're they're actually like. And that's what they do. And we're, we're not like that at all. We're just like, it's all good vibes like we're just having a good time all together and it's it's honestly the the first time in my life at least out of all the projects where it's like everything's really seamless uh relationship wise with uh, all the other guys in the band so it's refreshing it's nice it's so hilarious to watch okay if you've never seen six of before you're already a vicky Siracus fan for other reasons right and then someone said you got to check out her other band i was like okay kings today and it's just a bunch of loud nerdy dudes that looked like they should be doing their homework and here's this woman and she walks to the end of the table and like everyone needs to sit down no one's calming down and finally she just does hey and everyone just goes and what's funny was i'm making the reaction my fiance is sitting next to me and she goes uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> and i went what and she goes that's what it's like and i was like really she goes that's what that's what you're like when you get on these things on on youtube and on instagram i was like really she goes but i love you though it's okay and yeah. it, even though it was that hey what i caught from that was it's you're not bossing them around but big sister's gonna keep her little brothers from going way out of bounds especially yeah. around the dinner table and my favorite part is the band goes nuts and you're sitting there feet kicked up yeah glass of wine just just that that classic it's all good yeah. everything's fine but yeah. it, it went from that the, the harsh vocal it's like an extension of the original getting their attention and then you have rob coming in with his vocals and then you just sing that beautiful chorus and from the moment i heard that i thought there, there's a fun, there's a jovial attitude about telling the story that has resonated on every song so far. And my thought is, if they ever do a sad one, I'm just going to break. And I'm sure it's going to come eventually. Ooh. It's, it's going to come eventually. I'm, and I'm, I'm okay with it. But I tell people, like, and they say, well, why, what's your favorite part about Six Sense? I said, let me put it like this. It's like, it's like a North American electric callboy who understands that you got to be a little bit more mature about it. Like you don't make it campy for campy's sake, but damn it, you guys are having fun. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's what appeals to me that there's a musicianship there. There's creative writing. There's a force there. It's all the music we're watching, but there's a lot of creativity that is being focused in a way that makes us go, I'm just having fun with this. So my question now is what's next? Cause you guys just moved to Arizona which is a huge move. Yeah. Qu Quebec, Arizona. Yeah, they're exactly alike. So <laughs> how, now I, I, I got some following your, your Twitch streams. I know the move hasn't been perfectly easy and things have not been the greatest in overall sense, life-wise for both of you as you go to this new section of your life. How, what's the next step for Sixth Inch with half the band here and half the band in Quebec? Is there, is there some stuff coming up that we can be looking forward to? Okay, yeah. So a few things to say there. First, I just wanted to add, um, before we go to that, to what you were saying, because um, your assessment, I think, of our music is pretty spot on. And I just wanted to say through, through the journey so far, I've realized that what we're doing is just honest. And I think that's why... It's like there's a message in the music and there's there's um, there's something um, powerful there, but we are having fun. Like when I wanted to, to get into a band and do music, it, it wasn't because I was thinking, oh, I got to pay the bills somehow. It was because I wanted to have fun. Like I genuinely wanted to do something that's 
entertaining and exciting for myself. So um, that leads me to believe that what we're doing is just honest and from the heart. And to also just add a little nugget there, I will let you know that we we already wrote that song. So the sad the one sad song. Yes, it's coming. Um, <laughs> So. Okay, and you're not gonna be ready for it. <laughs> no, I'm not. But I'm gonna pretend I'm ready. But yeah. if you, but if you guys, if you guys make me Ronnie Radke cry, I, I, it's dude. That my week has been crazy with that. I God, mean, we don't. Yeah, we don't have that production level and like a whole choir orchestra thing. Don't need but, it. But but, I made myself cry when we wrote that song. So I'm I'm doomed. I'm doomed. <laughs> um, which leads us to. I guess the future and yeah we've been we've been writing new songs now um over the last year or so and um our next step is to bring our guitar player and bass player brandon sam down here um actually we just booked their flights yeah. last week uh they are coming for, for Go! well okay so sam is coming for one month in uh basically september mm -hmm. uh brand just booked a one-way ticket so he's going to be moving down here with us, staying with us for the time being. And um, I think Sam is going to follow eventually. Yeah. He just, he's younger. He has a life, you know, Bran, Bran is uh, also an immigrant. Like he, he's from Serbia. So he doesn't have like, I, I can relate a lot to Bran because it's like, I've, I lived in Greece. I've moved so much in my life. It's not hard for me to just pack my bags and go again. Um, I think it's different when you're born and raised and like, this is my entire family here. But um, basically, that's the gist. Slowly, everyone's coming down here and we're going to work on getting their paperwork and making it official if possible. And um, well, it's not possible. We're doing it. We're, we're going to hire the lawyers and everything to make it, yes, make it happen. Like that. But, you know, there's no guarantees in life. So I mean, we, we wish it was as easy as give me your coat. Here's yeah. your sunscreen. But it's not that easy. No. Um, Especially coming to the States. It's yeah. not. No, no. Um, but but we are working on it and we're very serious about it. And the main reason is like I've been in bands and projects all my life through like distance where the whole unit isn't in the same city and it, it's it's honestly detrimental it's like yes a it's awesome that we can do everything through computers now and songwrite and all that which we didn't have that you know 20 years ago that's really cool but if the whole unit isn't in the same city then you're not ready to go at any minute like if we get a phone call and and we're it's like the support band dropped out because someone got sick can you replace them? We can't be like, oh, let's call our other guys from Montreal and see if they can jump on a plane. You know, like yeah. it's it's and in today's music industry with um, so many bands out there, what I'm seeing is that the ones that are growing and, and getting an audience, they're not necessarily always the best musicians or the best bands. They're the ones that are consistent. They're the ones that are putting in the work. So in my head, I'm like, well, we already have the, the best music. We got that covered. What we need is consistency and what we need is hard work. And how do we get that? We get that by having everyone all together and making six cents a priority. If you're going to get in there and make it like, there's a lot of bands out there. I talk to a lot of bands, you know, not as many as y'all do, but they all tell me the same thing. It's literally how tight of a unit are you are, um, the communication, the creative process, is it open or are we doing this Metallica 1993 thing? Um, and the bands that make it now do three things well. Like you said, they put in the work. And it's not just, hey, we wrote a song, we've got 10,000 views on YouTube, we're done. It's what are you setting up for the next thing next week? Or, or in the next week, who's doing social media? How are we attacking this? Number two, Getting together in a close sense, similar to how when they made the, if you ever seen uh, the Foo Fighters documentary, when, you know, half of the band was living in Seattle, the other half was in, in Los Angeles, and Dave Grohl said, screw all this, we're all moving to Virginia and we're living in a basement. And they won four Emmys in an album they recorded in a week in his basement. You just have to have that closeness. And the third thing, save money any way you possibly can. I have never seen 
the stuff that has happened since COVID where bands, they're not going to make it just because the finances are ridiculous now for just to become an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thankfully, uh, I, yeah, I agree on all three points. Uh, thankfully, and here comes the experience. Like we're not, we're not 18. This isn't our first band. Uh, thankfully throughout the years, we've all gathered enough to make this happen. Like I have a home studio here. I, I, you know, want to upgrade my microphone, but like everyone in the band kind of has what they need to create music at home, which is, which is a blessing. Cause like, I can't imagine having to book a studio right now just to rehearse and record and rearrange music like that thousands and thousands like would just go down the drain. Um, so I'm also really thankful that everyone in the band has like extra skills. Like Sam, our bassist is like um, getting really, really into like mixing and production right now, which just, just, yes. Thanks. And you don't have to worry about somebody, you don't have to worry about somebody else changing your sound because they're mixing it their thought oh. way. It's a member of the family. I, I see yeah. Rob turning the garage into a studio here in the next six months. You'll see him putting soundboard, soundboard up on the walls and putting foam cartons around. And he's like, okay, everybody, tonight on Twitch, raising money for a foam cage. Don't ask me why. It has nothing to do with sex. I swear to God. And then it's like, <laughs> we're doing vocals, people. So, no, I, sometimes it's, it's what you got to do. Also, now that if once you get everyone kind of in a unit, at least somewhat local, um, you can start hitting those U.S. runs. Now, yeah. I would say it'd be easier if you were in the Midwest or even in the East Coast. Arizona's a pretty far stretch from anything, but at least you don't have to get a visa to go yeah. to Texas or to California and hit an L.A. run. Yeah. It's a little bit more feasible. It's just a, a rent a van and figure it out. And because you're so close as family, there's no divas there. I mean, well, Rob a little bit, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've had thoughts. Like, I don't know how this is going to go, but like, if we start getting tour opportunities, like I've had thoughts of like, let's buy an old used RV. Let's like rip it out and put bunk beds in there and like do the thing, you know, like it, it, this business is just like any other business in the world except it's more brutal but um it it takes money to make money yeah so it's like um one thing that will hurt you in the long run is if you're constantly renting things if you're what renting your traveling um vehicle if you're renting your equipment to tour um all that stuff like it adds up you're like yeah okay this tour it only the rentals only cost us 10 grand whereas like buying it new would have cost us 80 grand but if you plan on doing like 10 tours or something you know and if you, you take care of it you can use it for the next time yeah or you could sell it at some point or you could rent it out to other bands like the the like when you own something it's an asset it's, it's an asset yeah you're not just blowing away money so i i understand that concept um I've always understood it in life that like, it's better to own and it just, it takes money to make money. I think, I think this might be the reason why now's the perfect time for Sixth Sense to really get to their stride musically. Because I think the experience that you guys have, both not only as performers, but as people in the industry, could you imagine if you guys did have a converted room in your house that you can, because it's your house, you could do whatever you want with it. And you did have that little RV set for just six what six cents needs and all of a sudden somebody goes couldn't get this band out of europe because pff, logistic crap they had to cancel we don't have a spot happened last year dragon force didn't have an opener battle beast had to drop out because of logistics and they had to scramble to find someone six cents is like logistics it's parked in the driveway let's go <laughs> all we need is fuel and food and and some way to wash the bear costume and we're good um <laughs> But if you're cutting out all the stuff that's crippling bands, that comes with experience. And I, th I think it's going to do you guys well, especially as an independent band for the most part too. Yeah. But yeah. I, could you, because I mean, what happened to Crypta this last year was a nightmare for anybody. Oh God, yeah. And when they came out with that, I'm like, here's my hundred bucks. It's coming from the channel. My people love this band. You guys had what happened to you? A building fell on your RV. How much do you need? Holy crap. Label's not going to cover that? Wow. Okay, well, we got you. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and, and thankfully when big things happen like that, usually the community, people that don't even listen to the band will just like jump in and be like, here you go. This is what I can give. Um, Cause I think like, that's a natural disaster there. Like there wasn't like someone drank too much and like had an accident. Like that's it's not like that's Fifi backed it up against the wrong wall. Yeah. She backed it up where they told her to back up and she's crying. And I'm like, she's the most fierce person I've ever seen. I mean, yeah, yeah, she is so fierce on stage. Those eyes. Ah. Yeah. But then you see her on social media and you're like, oh, she said she's she's well, she's like Vicky. She's sweet and she's amazing and then you put her on a stage and i, I get uh just want to run away um so we've talked about the band you've got new stuff coming up hopefully one that'll not make me cry too much personally i have some personal questions they're not bad don't worry it's literally things of this nature okay rob here's the first one and i have them written down yeah. favored food on the road or at home and who makes it? Who's the cook in the house? We want to know. Who's the cook in the house? All right. Well, my favorite food, it's a simple answer. I love cheeseburgers. Anytime I go into a pub, I am the cheeseburger man. He I thinks he's Tony Stark. You hear that shit? Thinks he's Tony Stark. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, in this household, usually Vicky cooks. I'll be her little sous chef and help out a little help out yeah <laughs> but uh v vicky's the one who cooks you need to step up man man in this house nobody <laughs> cooks but me <laughs> i also clean up too so it's fine um same question but for vicky what is your favorite food if it's something different on the road let us know and we already know who does everything it's you we get yeah. we already knew that yeah no i don't i don't i don't have a favorite food um because uh like honestly like cooking is like a well i don't do it as much anymore because i'm just so immersed in all this music stuff but it's it was always like a hobby of mine and um i always say that like if i didn't have music as a passion like maybe i would have gotten into like the, the the chef world or something like it's just something that i enjoy a lot um and when we're on tour i'm like the type that wants to try like all the local flavors mm -hmm. and stuff like that so i'm just a foodie in general and when you ask me what's your favorite food it's kind of like asking me like what's your favorite band i i can't like it's no it depends upon where i'm at it depends upon where i'm at um i'm a foodie yeah. too uh yeah. my my fiance and i we do things called jaunts mm. it's where you drive somewhere within 10 hours someplace you can go within one day and yeah. you're looking for those mom and pop local hole in the wall spots that are not chains to find the perfect bite and then when you get there and you fall in love with it, try to figure out how to recreate it at home. Yeah. And I'm the same way. If I wasn't, if, if I could make money or keep myself from burning down the house, I'd probably cook all day. But um, yeah, I'm the same way with that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here's my favorite one. This is my favorite one. And a lot of people know, I know Vicky, you do a lot of podcasts. You do a lot of streaming and you talk a lot about the industry, bands, bands you love, bands you whatever, and you talk about what it is to be a vocalist in the industry already. So this one may be a loaded question for you, but for Rob, we have no idea. For all we know, Rob just runs around screaming at walls. Um, I, I'm just, I'm not, hey, I, I'm guilty. I know, I do it too. Okay, favorite, <laughs> sorry. Rob, we'll go with you first because Vicky could be a deep answer. Rob, favorite band growing up, favorite band now, and what's the one band you've never seen, but it's bucket list for you? Oh man, this is tough. This yeah, is this one came from Fred. This came from Fred Barnes. You know that guy, oh. so. Fred, why you do this to us? Um, well, cause, Cause he loves you. Yeah, <laughs> the, the band I grew up with that really got me into metal, it's, that's an easy one for me. That's Slipknot. That was like the first band I, I, I heard. I heard Slipknot and I was like, what is this? Like I, I heard Before I Forget. And then I took a deep dive into their other music and I was just blown away. I'm like, wow, this, this is something else. And I was just like, I immediately want to do this. And I just like started like screaming along to Slipknot songs back in the day. And that's, that's what got me into that rabbit hole. Uh, favorite band right now. It doesn't have to be one that you're like associated with. It's just the one that's the guilty pleasure. And it could be something from the past. Like if you're, if you're a closet ABBA fan, let it out. Come on. Oh yeah. No, I def definitely am. Um, I, I just like really like 
whatever's like going on at the time like uh like and i don't mean to like jump on anyone's bandwagon or anything of that sort but like i've just been listening to a lot of uh spirit box uh bad omens actually uh, i really like what those bands are doing it's completely different from us but like i love i love that and i i appreciate that um then another artist um i haven't I haven't really been listening to what he's been putting out lately, but I love this. Uh, he's kind of like a metal rapper named uh, Zilla Kami. I love what he's got going on. He's got this like heavy metal project called City Morgue, uh, and I'm all about that. So I think that's okay. How you spell that? Too. Because this is a Rob Rob recommendation. What's well, Zilla? Uh, it's Z I L L A K A M I. Huh. And it, it's just it's just super cool. What I love about him and like what a lot of mainstream artists are starting to do is like they're either like pop artists or they're they're rappers and they're incorporating heavy metal elements into their music. And that's only good news for like a band like Six Sense because that means that there's this crossover appeal that's only happened like in the late '90s when bands were like like Limp Bizkit was collaborating with all the rappers like in Wu Tang Clan. And, and all that was going on. Um, so it's like, I think like now uh, music's in like a really interesting spot. It's really dark and heavy, the mainstream music that's happening now, which is great for that real heavy metal band crossover appeal to start happening again. And I think it is happening with bands like Ginger and Spirit Box. So. All right. Well, so you have your bucket list one? Bucket list band that, I, oh, that you haven't oh. seen live. <sighs> I was just thinking about it the other day. Who have I not seen live? Uh, this is a tough one. I ha I had this answer just the other day. I was like, yes, I've never seen this band, and I really want to. You can you can you can just message me on Instagram, and I'll I'll just keep it between you and I. <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll think about it. I'm I'll think about it. Well, make the answers answers your questions. Yeah, I don't know who I haven't <laughs> seen live. Also, you managed to kick me out of the frame Sorry. somehow yeah he's been leaning pretty he's been face. he's been leaning pretty heavy on you with that affection oh i'm sorry mike grab yeah it's That's okay why. yeah uh rappers man yeah bar throwers <laughs> yeah um so i don't know uh favorite band i don't have a favorite band because it's hard for me to think of a band that's like been consistent from day one to today that I'm like, oh, everything they put out is amazing. Um, but I guess the first band that actually like inspired me to do this, because like I, I slowly got into it, I discovered, you know, Linkin Park, I discovered Muse, I discovered like all these late 90s, early 2000 bands that like, I was like, oh, this is music I want to listen to. Um, but the first band that made me want to sing along to the music and made me consider singing as a career was Evanescence. So I would say that's that's the the band. But then I will also say that like after like Fallen to me was like a 11 out of 10 album. Like there's yeah. no bad song on there. Um, and then The Open Door came out and I was like, this is also a very good album, very different. Um, but then I, I stopped listening, like what they did, what they started doing just wasn't really like for me as much. So that's why, that's probably the only reason why I can't say like, oh, they're my favorite band, because how can you say someone's your favorite band with like one or two albums only? I don't, it, it's a trap question to ask a musician, especially someone who's, it's yeah. their life, what their favorite band is because they're being influenced by it. Cause if music is your life, it's the same thing as asking a chef what your favorite food is. It's you, it's an amalgamation of everything you've been exposed to. It's it, what what gets me is if you listen to the ones that Rob talks about, it's it's emblematic of his style. And then when you listen to the three you mentioned, it's amazing storytelling bands yeah. from when you were a young person. And it's like, well, that's what Vicky does. She's always told stories, and Evidences is, is the ultimate storytelling band of that of that time. And especially for those of us in the United States and Canada. During that time in the 2000s, we were kind of cut off from symphonic vocals and metal symphonic female vocals that were prevalent in Europe. They just, everyone was like, Amy Lee was the first one there. Oh, she was the first one here. And thank God she got a shot because it opened the door for so many people. My favorite part now is because of the way YouTube is and the way that a band can have their voice, create music and get it out to the world. 
you don't have a radio station or a label telling everyone this is what's good. At least in metal and in and more of the creative rock genres, you can be your own voice and find your way. Pop and, and country, that's still kind of emblematic of the industry and radio still, but I'm just, I tell people all the time that now is the most exciting time to be a metal fan. Yeah. My, my, my inspiration growing up was Rush, and this is pre-moving pictures Rush, by the way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, with the 20 minute songs, cause it just, it, it just took me on these journeys as a kid. And then now growing up as a teenager in the eighties and early nineties, that was all industry. It was all MTV, big money, telling everybody what the hottest new band was. And now when you see bands like Six Sense, Make Way for Man in, in you know, or Head Wreck in Australia, or all these, all these independent, progressive metalcore, uh, new metal, uh, modern metalcore bands in Germany and throughout Europe that are just, you throw a rock, you're going to hit five. And all these bands, they got a shot. They're never just going to be, I'm only going to play in my local area and have a local fan base. If you have good storytelling, it just takes one little moment and you become Bloody Wood. Or you have that one little moment and you become Electric Cowboy. Nobody knew who those bands were three years ago at all. Yeah. And so if it can happen to them, it can happen to anyone. You just have to push, creative, do the work. And when, you, when your shot comes, you swing for the fences. I mean, and that's what you guys are doing. And I love it. Mm -hmm. I'm loving it just so much. <laughs> so I think that's our time. Okay. Well, I remembered I want to see Incubus. That's the band I would love to see live. Oh, Incubus. That's it. That's it. Um, I, I saw them last month. Ah, <laughs> no, um, I had no, I had seen them three or four times back, you know, when you guys were probably in grade school. Yeah. And um, I saw them and I, I, I loved them. Segway to last year, we're going on a road trip with my kids up to Tennessee. We're going to go to, to uh, Pigeon Forge in Gatlinburg, you know, a little summer trip. We're in the car and the song Drive comes on. Mm -hmm. And so I look over at my fiance and Chelsea's just singing the song and she's doing this. And I look at her, I'm like, you like Incubus? She goes, I love Incubus. Do you like Incubus? Morning View, I have them all. And our kids in the back seat watched us geek the fuck out that she's 12 years younger than me. And she loves Incubus and I love Incubus. And we just only found out at that moment. That's awesome. So our kids wound up getting a, the deep dive of Incubus all the way to Tennessee. But yeah, so I get it. Good storytelling is good storytelling. Yep. Well, I'm looking forward to the next stuff. Is there, before we go, is there anything that you want to share, not only with Six Sense fans, but all of the people that check out my channel from other genres of music? What would you like to share before we in this confusing conversation. Do you have anything? I don't know. There's, there's so much. There's so much to talk about. And then Poetic. Good job, Rob. <laughs> Poetic. <laughs> I, would just, I would just say, um, like, uh, I'm, a big, I'm a big advocate of this. Like, um, if you're an artist, uh, don't be afraid to create. Don't be afraid to push boundaries. Uh, try things, and then don't be afraid to tell people that they're wrong. Don't be afraid to play it safe. You know, sometimes to not play it safe. Yeah, just do what you have to do, and and trust your gut, and um, just stick to your guns. You know, like if if you really believe in something, and somebody is like trying to get in your way, pick them up, body slam them out, and be like, I don't care, I'm doing it anyways. <laughs> All right, kids, don't body slam your sister no matter what Rob just told you. But I will say this, after watching just the way you guys talk, even if I wouldn't tell everybody that I already know that if you're gonna start a band and you're gonna do things, pay attention. They know what they're talking about. I would tell all every young couple in the world, hey, this is what communication looks like. You know, there, there's no egos here. It's just, you know, she's, yeah. she compliments you, you compliment her and it's beautiful to see. So everybody, the amazing Killer V and Rob. By the way, who is in... The, you, you're not going to answer this, are you? you no. You're not going to tell us who's in the bear outfit, in the costume. Well, it's Deli. It's Deli. Like, <laughs> well, I know, but it's who's so in... Confused. He's Deli. His name is Deli. It's literally Deli <laughs> is in the bear suit. <laughs> Unimpressed. It's, it's not a gimmick. Like, I don't know how to explain it. 
the, the individual's name is Delhi. <laughs> you know, it's the most often asked question. I'm it, sure of it. It's, it's only, only people who actually know Delhi in real life understand this like it's like yeah it's deli's deli it's, it's like it would be like like me, uh, me telling you it's mark and you'd be like who's mark well if you've never met him <laughs> so it's deli his name's deli his name's his name's actually deli yeah wow you heard it here probably 47th everybody okay <laughs> thank you so much for spending this time how hot is it outside it's pretty it's hot yeah. yeah like a hundred and something five six seven i don't know we're we're a hundred here in louisiana with 89 percent humidity oh Ooh. we don't have that no you don't yeah. which is yeah but I, I just i knew that you are y'all y'all are in phoenix are y'all in um like outskirts of phoenix yeah, yeah. south Suburbs. south uh, or north north, okay. north north of phoenix i didn't know how close to i-10 you guys got because yeah gotcha just letting south you know now okay north. When the RV is fixed up and you jump on the road, if you should come anywhere near Houston, down I-10 towards New Orleans, anywhere in there, this fat boy with this shirt is going to be, <laughs> Deli, I know who you are. And Deli's like, what? <laughs> My name's Mark. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, everybody. That's the amazing Vicky Sarakis and, of course, Rob. My, two of my most favorite people I've never met before. It's true. Now, you know how many people love you guys and they've never met you just because of the way you guys are? Aww. Aww. <laughs> so sweet. You yeah. want to know why? Because every time Vicky's live on Twitch and she's like, Rob, Rob, this isn't, this is not working. This, this mic, right? it's not work. It's, it's not, it's, my camera stopped again. Rob, it stopped again. Yeah. Nobody feels more, more deeply and sorrowful then when you have technical problems, I don't know why it follows you around the way it does. And it yeah. sucks because technically you don't need all that technology. I bet you're amazing acoustic. So yeah. that's very true, but uh, I need a new microphone for that. So all right. is it on, is it, is it on the wish list? It is not because it's very expensive. I doubt someone would buy that for me. It's like four four figures. So yeah. Oh, is it one of those green ones like Flory Anson had that six thousand dollar one? Oh God, no! It's not that expensive. Okay, it's then like why? A little I, under two grand. Um, that's not too bad. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's my bucket. Like it's the microphone I've always recorded with in studio. Well, maybe not the exact model, but that like company, that style. And uh, so, like, all the Sixth Sense songs, the Agnes songs have been done with that microphone. So that I want to get that and record the same stuff at home. So, yeah. I've never heard of a GoFundMe for a microphone, but we may have to start one. All right. <laughs> get out of here. Hey, you guys enjoy your Friday. Thank you so much for spending time. And remember, Thanks. everyone is behind you guys 100%. And as soon as you guys make announcements about new music, new videos, anything involving a tour... Uh, when when the band finally gets there, when you guys you gotta stream the first rehearsal in in the new space, we are ready. Yeah, I know it's work, but you know, no no problem. Take your time. Hurry. Yeah, we're like today <laughs> today. So everyone, Vicky and Rob, thank you guys so much. Thanks thank for you for us. having thank us. You. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like. It really helps the channel grow. Also, if you want to subscribe, right there. Big thank you to all my Patreons out there. We appreciate everything you do. If you want more content like this video, check them out above. Remember, love one another, take care of each other. We're all stuck on this mud ball together. We'll see you later.